You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany. Welcome back to The Social Workers. My name is Eric Hardiman, and you're listening to The Social Workers live radio talk show on WCDB Albany. As I said, I'm Eric Hardiman, and I'm here with my co-host, Alyssa Lotmore. Welcome back, Alyssa. Hey, Eric. Happy end of the semester. Happy end of the semester. It's been uh, a really unique semester. I, I can't remember any semester quite like this one for a number of reasons. Well, it has been definitely interesting. And today we're going to hear from some students who are in the social welfare program at U Albany. So Eric, I'll yeah. let you introduce them. And we're excited to keep the show going in this uh, this time of social distancing. And so what we're doing with the social workers is we are recording remotely, not from the uh, WCDB studio. So we're recording remotely, but keeping the show alive and making sure that we continue to bring uh, the thoughts and ideas of our various guests to the community. So this is important to keep the conversation going. So like Alyssa said, today we have two guests with us. We have two graduating students from the U Albany School of Social Welfare Master of Social Work program. And we're excited to have them with us. We have with us two students. The first is Nick Pattison. Nick is uh, graduating from the MSW program and also has been participating in the Albany Internships in Mental Health program, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then we have Cassie Grandot. And Cassie is also a second year graduating MSW student who has been participating in the internships and aging projects. So Cassie and Nick, we'd like to welcome you both to the social workers. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. And congratulations. Your, I think classes officially ended yesterday. So you are just, you know, finishing up with any final papers and things like that. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would imagine it's a it's a unique uh, experience graduating from a master's program in a time like this and and thinking about uh, life transitions, certainly, but thinking about, you know, the, the big changes that have happened in the last two months. Yeah, whew, it's definitely been different, um, you know, definitely, uh, you know, I think a lot of students are figuring out, all right, well, how are we going to be? you know, celebrating our graduation and like how, you know, definitely, uh, you know, trying to manage finishing up everything, um, but also, you know, concluding it with the cohort of students that we started out with. Um, so, uh, you know, it's definitely a balance and also just balancing all the other life things that are happening now as well. Mm. Um, so, yeah, like you said, it's definitely been a semester, you know, a spring that I think uh, nobody else, you know, that uh, nobody really anticipated, but, you know, we're all getting, working through it. And what's, what's that experience been like for you, Cassie? Yeah, it's definitely, uh, it was unanticipated and we really just had to be flexible, which as social workers, we already try to do and adapt to the situations we're put in. So we are losing those abilities to have closing rituals and celebrations while also some of us being thrusted right into the workforce on the front lines. So there's a lot to get used to. Yeah. And you both are in programs and Cassie, you were just saying, you know, might having to go right into the front lines as you graduate. And Nick, you're in the, as we said, you're in the men Albany internships and mental health program. Cassie, you're in the internships and aging project. And these are two fields or two areas of social work practice, working with the aging and the mental health area that has been getting a lot of attention during this pandemic, the need for mental health services and the need for those who can work with the elderly and protect them, these, this vulnerable population. So I'd like to just sort of hear a little bit about, from each of you about what are these programs for those who may not be familiar, what is the AIM program and what is the IAP program and why is it, why did you choose to enter this as you went into the social welfare uh, program at UAlbany? Nick, we'll start with you. All right. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, like you said, um, I'm, I'm part of the AIM program, the internships in mental health. Um, uh, and so um, I, let's see, I went into the program uh, within you know, school of social welfare, actually having experience 
um, and thinking that I would actually join the IAT program, you know, in the in entering the program. And then I my first year internship, I was in a mental community mental health uh, placement, and realized, you know, what I really loved about that was being able to be in the community and um, you know really loved working with people of all different ages um, and particularly mental health because that sort of spans a lot of different um, you know areas and uh, disciplines and things like that so um, so I kind of uh, went along um, continuing that in the internships in mental health and um, and it's a specialized program um, for second year MSW students and their advanced concentration to really focus in on that mental health uh, aspect. Um, and there's a lot to focus in within that. Um, and so uh, you engage in you know, some uh, classes um, and then uh, engage in a specific internship based in that mental health uh, sort of aspect um, that does a lot of evidence-based practices. Um, and, uh, and then you also sort of have a cohort of students who do that, you know, do a similar internship and then a similar, you know, classes. Um, and so my internship was in a ACT team, which is a unique uh, assertive community treatment where you have, you know, a small group of people working with uh, really kind of the most high risk, um, quote unquote risk, uh, uh, people with schizophrenia living in the community um, or schizoaffective. Um, and so, uh, was an awesome, really awesome experience to uh, be on a team like that, you know, so it's a unique uh, uh, sort of way that they operate, you know, they have uh, small sort of teams that really kind of go out in the community and, um, and really support people. Um, so I really loved it and definitely really, um, you know, no matter where I kind of go uh, in the future, uh, definitely that experience um, working um, in mental health, especially in the sort of um, kind of what, what people might think of like more severe kind of uh, mental health really kind of prepares you for um, anything kind of in the future. So really uh, gives you a good solid foundation. Well, yeah, as you were saying, like mental health is something that goes across no matter what population you're going to be working yeah. with. There's, oh, whether it's children in the school setting or in a hospital setting, you're always going to sort of have that mental health aspect. So this background mm -hmm. is very valuable. Mm -hmm. Cassie, what yeah. about you for the aging population? Sure. So I definitely had an interest when applying to the program to the second year or to the master's program that I was interested in working in an aging population field. And I was actually lucky enough to work in a nursing home for my first year placement, which really solidified that I wanted to keep working and learning about this population. So I applied to the internships and aging project. And what's really great about it is one, there's a scholarship, which I feel like is always a great thing to help support your education and allowed me to feel comfortable and take a summer class, which before would have been a very large out-of-pocket expense and it would be for many people. And you just get so much experience in the field. So as an IAP student, you're in the field three days a week. You are in a rotation, no matter if you're a clinical student or a macro student. And there's so much support, both within your cohort that you're working alongside, as well as in the community, because in the capital region, there are a lot of IAP graduates and they love to come back and they love to support and do what they can. And that's a really great community to be a part of. And so the experience was great. I was interning. I had a bit of a unique rotation, which I really appreciated. I worked with the Alzheimer's Association as well as I was on an advanced um, illness management team. So that's a palliative care team and it was in home. And so I had my supervisor there. We would go into people's homes that had chronic progressive illnesses, um, which with palliative care, you can still be getting curative treatments. So a lot of interdisciplinary teamwork. And then with the Alzheimer's Association, it really fit in well. I was able to connect these two different internships together that normally hadn't worked a lot together, even though they had similar clients. And so you get the experience of really feeling like you're more than just an intern, which I feel like can happen to anyone. So it was really worthwhile. Well, it sounds like a really great experience. And 
For those who don't know, the social work field is very broad. You know, we have a, a, a listeners who might not be as familiar with the social work field. So the social work field is very broad. So a lot of students, when they enter the MSW program, it's more of a, a generalist kind of program where you're learning skills that are applicable to wherever you may work, um, those critical skills to be a social worker. But these two programs have, more, as you just heard from Nick and Cassie, some more specialization to help them you know, be able to have a little bit more uh, educational classroom time, internships directly spe- or specifically related to mental health or aging. So it yeah. seems like this has been a really great experience. And for those who don't know, Eric is the director or leader of the AIM program and Linda Mertz is for the IAP program. Yeah. And I'm wondering if, if Nick and Cassie, if the two of you could talk a little bit about how your experiences in these internships uh, was integrated with what you were learning in the classroom. So Mm -hmm. were there specific ways that those two modes of learning got integrated for you? And did these internships give you a different experience in terms of how you, you know, took what you were learning in the classroom and then applied it in a, in a real life situation? Definitely. Um, So in the classroom, you know, there's a, say a class that, Uh, all AIM students have to take, which is evidence-based practices and mental health. Um, And so you look at all sorts of different evidence-based practices um, that are, you know, currently happening in sort of mental health uh, within the social work uh, profession and, uh, and definitely, you know, really relating it to your practice and thinking about, all right, you know, like, especially, you know, me being on an ACT team in an internship, you know, two days a week being there the ACT, you know, model itself is an evidence-based uh, practice, you know, so that means really, uh, you know, having lots of research and evidence that shows that it works. Um, and then, you know, using a lot of sort of, say, what's called evidence-based methods, you know, um, you know, motivational interviewing and really kind of uh, helping, uh, you know, doing sort of some of the clinical sort of uh, practices that, you um, really, you know, the, the classes really uh, help you prepare for that, give you those clinical skills to mm-hmm. apply. Um, and so, yeah, there's so many different classes that definitely um, really do uh, relate. And, you know, all classes, I like to think, you know, kind of have that aspect where, you know, you can apply what you're, what you're doing in your field to your class and what you're doing in your class to your field. Um, so vice versa. Great. What about you, Cassie? Yeah, so as Nick was saying, we also have some courses that we have to take as IAP students. One of those courses is a clinical course, so both macro and micro students take it, and it's mature and aging adults, so that's really great experience. You really get to go over different types of, as Nick was saying, evidence-based practices, as well as different ways to assess um, what to look for when working with older adults, and it really does get to play right into your field experiences because you're assessing in the field, you're doing interventions in the field, Mm -hmm. even classes that all second year students take, like research classes, you're even able to integrate parts of that into your experience, depending on what you want to do. So what you learn in the classroom is really um, put into practice in the field, which really helps connect the pieces because it's different reading something in a book or looking at it on a PowerPoint and actually practicing it. So having those specialized internships, I really do feel it gives you the ability to really practice and hone your craft. Sure, sure. So I'm curious, you know, I I know this is a, you know, like we said, starting off an interesting time with the uh, pandemic that's hit our our world. And, um, you know, one of the things in thinking about sort of what's what are some of the opportunities that have come about as a result of this situation, one of the things that I'm hearing uh, from some different folks is that it's given us a time to slow down a little bit and to reflect, to be more thoughtful and to, uh, you know, trying to put a positive spin on a really uh, not so positive situation. But I wonder if the two of you could reflect a little bit on um, how this has impacted you both personally and professionally. Yeah. And Nick, def- maybe if you could start. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so 
Um, so personally, definitely, um, and thinking also, I'm thinking kind of personally and then also professionally um, uh, and thinking about the sort of mental health kind of social work, mental health kind of field as mm -hmm. well professionally. So personally, um, you know, it's definitely, I think it's had an impact on everybody, you know, um, and so, um, and so, you know, myself, I'm, you know, fortunate to still be, you know, working from home and, um, and also, you know, being able to take some extra time to, uh, you know, spend time with family and, um, you know, things like that. And definitely, you know, at times it's, it's difficult, uh, but definitely uh, we're all getting through it together. Um, so um, that's kind of, uh, you know, personally. Um, and then, um, you know, professionally, especially thinking, um, you know, let's say further avenues of my professionally, personally profession, and then also kind of generally profession. Um, so personally, I'll be uh, doing more work in the actually for the school of social welfare in the in the future. Um, and so, um, you know, definitely, um, it's definitely uh, an interesting time for, you know, that sort of intersection of social work and higher education. Um, and, you know, really looking forward to applying those skills that I've developed in the AIM program um, to work with students in this really challenging time. Um, so, um, and then also kind of thinking about, you know, larger picture, um, you know, systemically what's happening in mental health and social work. Um, and, you know, with the stay at home orders, there's been such an uptick in, you know, uh, domestic violence cases, overdose deaths, um, you know, so much more, you know, calls on the hotlines. Um, so, um, so mental health has really been in crisis for all people who are staying at home and even, you know, as we've seen in, a, in many different cases for the workers on the front lines. So I think it's really exposing, um, you know, kind of systemically um, some issues that we definitely need to address um, and some areas that we can um, really help each other out in the sort of social welfare realm, um, particularly in mental health. Um, so great. Yeah. Thank you. How about you, Cassie? Yeah, so personally, as you alluded to, it's definitely given me a lot of time to reflect on things that are important to me and what I want for myself while also tell, practicing kind of what I learn and try to do with others to do with myself, which is not to be so hard on myself, to really not have any set expectations at this time right now, but to just do my best and the rest will kind of come naturally. And so it really helps you think about what's important and what you want, which is always good. And then on a more professional note, I will be starting a position at Saratoga Hospital on May 18th in care management, working mostly with older adults. So it's definitely just, you know, it's, we have to just remember all the things that we've been learning all along. So knowing that entering into a hospital can be a very stressful environment can lead to some functional declines. And I imagine COVID is really making this so much worse. Mm -hmm. um, nursing home admissions, people not being able to safely return home, especially for older adults and how a lot of people probably didn't imagine this for themselves. So being really cognizant of what each individual is going through, but also caregivers and family members, people aren't allowed to go to hospitals and see their loved ones or their friends or their family of choice. So being mindful of how challenging that can be on everyone is so important. So just really taking it up a notch in sort of how we're going to assess and connect people and how we're going to do that. So professionally, just trying to think more of how I can already do what I've been learning, but I think taking it up a notch during a pandemic. Right, right. And I want to congratulate both of you as you both have jobs lined up yeah. that you'll be starting. Uh, Nick at the School of Social Welfare and Cassie at Saratoga Hospital. So congratulations, especially during this time where the unemployment rate is through the roof. Um, congratulations right. for having secured positions uh, that are very valuable. They're very, you're going to be helping a lot of people and being able to use your social work skills. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I think this is a time that you've, you know, you've both done a really nice job articulating and sort of alluding to the fact that this is a time when the social work profession, as broad as it is, 
and as strategic as it can be, has a real opportunity to, uh, you know, to help the community and to help change the way we think about the needs that various groups of people within our community have. Um, and so whether that's, you know, increasing awareness about mental health or about aging populations or whether that's, you know, changing service delivery systems to make them more responsive or whether it's actually delivering services and, and integrating with healthcare, um, you know, it seems like social work is, uh, from my perspective, kind of on the cusp of, of really being able to change for the the better and to, you know, to play a key critical role in improving society. Definitely. I think we're definitely seeing how important it is, you know, on a society level is definitely recognizing, hey, we really need social workers at this time right. to come and deliver those needed services. Well, that's one thing. Social workers are essential workers. And so many friends of mine who have graduated, you know, who were graduated with me and who have alums that I've been talking to, they're still going out there. They're still doing their home visits. They're still working in nursing homes or in hospitals. Our school, even school social workers are still going to delivering food and doing those things to make sure that the the clients that they're serving still get the, need, the their services. And I think one of these things is showing that social workers are essential. They are still going out there and doing doing what they need to do to help the individuals that they're trying to serve. Um, so I think that's a valuable thing that for our profession to show the need for our profession, and it's sort of elevating that, uh, which is which is good. But so many times when you th see a job, sometimes it's like, oh, we can maybe cut the social worker. Or do we need the social worker? I think a lot of this has shown that we do need the social workers, both on the d direct services side and also that macro level side to advocate right. for healthcare policy changes. Why, you know, a lot of these things that are going on, if, you know, it relates back to healthcare. Do the people who are getting the most sick have access to health care? What was, you know, what were some of these systemic issues that have caused people to maybe get more sick than than other individuals? So I think the need for advocacy is critical right now. Yeah, well put. I, and I think you both, you know, I think you've, like I said, both done just a really wonderful job articulating your experiences. And, and you're also uh, both strike me as just really excellent examples of, you know, sort of what a graduate education can do for a person. And, and you're both on the cusp of starting these brand new careers, uh, which is exciting and probably a little frightening at the same time. But uh, you're, you're out there ready to make a difference and ready to carry on the UAlbany tradition and, you know, really uh, take what you've learned and, and use it for the common good. Mm. And as we, as we wrap up, I just have a, a question for both of you as you are graduating. Uh, what has been sort of a memorable or experience for you as your time here, as you're, you're wrapping up your time at UAlbany? What has been something that maybe stood out? And it could be in relation to the IAP or AIM program or something else. Is there an experience or, uh, you know, an event or what was it that stood out to you as you, as you finish up your ex time here at UAlbany? <laughs> That's a great question. Hard question. <laughs> Hard question. <laughs> Oof. Um, so many different, uh, so many different things I could say. Um, you know, definitely there are some things that really come to mind. Um, the AIM program being one of them, really thinking about, you know, how awesome my supervisor was and, you know, the team that I had that I was working with there. Um, another thing that really does come to mind a lot um, that really, I think, changed my uh, you know, how I went about this, this uh, school uh, MSW program um, was definitely being a GA as well. Um, and so, you know, working as a graduate assistant um, and really, you know, getting uh, connected with other graduate assistants within the School of Social Welfare, you know, answering those, even, you know, doing some uh, simple tasks of, you know, answering phone, phone calls, emails at the help desk. Um, but, uh, you know, it definitely... Uh, means a lot more and allows you to sort of connect with other uh, students and um, faculty uh, in a way that uh, wouldn't normally. So mm -hmm. I think um, in that way, definitely, um, I think it's uh, been a really awesome sort of uh, experience and, you know, from all sort of different angles of, of that. 
Um, so I think that, uh, you know, highlights would definitely be, you know, being a GA and really having that second year AIM experience with the, you know, with the really specialized sort of um, internship. Well, I was a grad assistant too when I was uh, way back when, when I was a student. So I'm still here now. So obviously, you know, obviously the connection that you make as a grad student where you're really Mm -hmm. working and, you know, you're getting a a different experience and you're learning more about the school and the program and and making connections. Even if it's by answering phone calls, it's a really great skill to an experience to have as a student and especially the connections you make with your peers who are grad assistants as well and the faculty and staff. So I can definitely agree with you on that one. Cassie, what about you? Yeah, so I have to say that IAP was really that experience that I think really helped me see the social worker that I want to be leaving this program. And I will definitely be taking with me this idea of the philosophy of palliative care and how that is always going to be a part of my practice, whether I'm working with older adults, kids, middle age, mental health, it fits into everything because we're trying to help people live well, live the life that they want, help them meet their goals and their needs. And so that's what I'm going to be taking with me is realizing the power of our presence, whether we can really measure that or not, that's kind of tricky, but knowing that our presence is powerful and that we're going to help so many people Mm. live well. Mm. It seems like you've both had great experiences here at UAlbany, and I'm so happy to hear that. And it, you're going to be amazing in this profession, just from ta- listening to you today, talking about your experience, talking about sharing what you've learned. I'm really excited to welcome you into the alumni community in, a, in a, yeah. like a week or two. I do work with alums at the School of Social Welfare, so I will still be in contact with you even after if you after you graduate. But I really think that you're going to do amazing things for the profession. You have such a great foundation, especially due to the AIM and IAP program. So I just uh, I'm really excited to hear yeah. about all the things that you're going to be doing in the future. So please stay in touch. And you, you are both always uh, welcome back to come, welcome to come back to the Social Workers Radio Show anytime you'd like. And once we are back on campus and recording in the studio again, if you'd like to come visit the studio and do an interview uh, on air the proper way without <laughs> remote recording, uh, we're certainly happy to have you as guest if you want to tell us what it's like after you've graduated and, you know, maybe six months or a year from now, it'd be great to have you back. Mm. Great. Yeah, thank you. So you've been listening to an interview with Nick Pattison and Cassie Grandot, both whom are graduating from the MSW program at the UAlbany School of Social Welfare. You're listening to The Social Workers live on WCDB Albany. I'm Eric Hardiman, and I've been here with Alyssa Lotmore. Thanks for your help, Alyssa. No problem, Eric. So we have lots more interviews lined up, lots of future shows. We are continuing uh, the momentum of the social workers, and I think we'll even have some shows over the summer. Is that is that right, Alyssa? I'm planning on it. So um, for those who don't know about our show, we really like to see, provide resources to community. We see the public as the client. We want to continue to reach people who might never have considered seeing or using a social worker or know about the social work field and what we offer. So I think continuing the show would be really, really great. And also for a lot of our guests, it's a way to provide a resource. It, we're, I look at it as an educational tool as well for even those who want to be on to be able to practice to get their message out, talk about their agencies, talk about their experience. So yeah. continuing the show is something that I find very valuable to not only us as a school of social welfare, but to the community and to those who are on the show. So yes, we will be yeah. back. Sounds great. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time on The Social Workers on WCDB Albany. You're listening to The Social Workers on WCDB Albany.